Validation allows us to ensure that the data that we're accepting and working with within our backend matches exactly as we expect it to be. For example, if we take a look at our user's username requirements here, it must be a string, which is represented by this bar chart. It must be a maximum length of 50 characters, and it must also be unique. So no two users can have the same username within our user's table. We can utilize validation to ensure that our username matches all of these criteria. And likewise, we can do this for all data that we need to store within our application as well. So every new Adonis 5 project actually comes with this built-in Adonis validator. And this validator comes with a number of different types and rules that we can validate our data against. We can also extend the validator to finding custom rules if we need to as well. And then again, the validator will provide us error messages should any of our validations fail. And these two can be customized as well. So there's actually two different contexts here that we can use the validator in. We can use it directly off of our request and we can use it standalone outside of our request context. Both of these are fairly similar. There's a couple of differences here. So first and foremost here, if we're using it directly off of our request, we're going to call validate directly off of our request from our HTTP context contract. Additionally, since we're calling validate off of our request, it's going to use by default the request body data to validate against. So if we have a JSON submission, it's going to validate against the JSON post body. If we have a form submission, it's going to use those form fields to validate against whatever data is residing within our request body, essentially. If we use the standalone usage, we need to import the validator from Adonis Core Validator, use that instead of our request, and then call validate off of that. Additionally, since we don't have a request here to automatically pluck data off of, we need to manually define the data here as well. So that's really the only difference between the request usage and the standalone usage of the validator. So first and foremost here, to get some data validated, we must have something to validate against. And that's what we use schemas for. So we wanna import schema from Adonis Core Validator. And we wanna use this import here to actually create a new schema with. So in this case here, we're inside of our users controller and I created a register method here and I cleaned up all of the other methods within this users controller so that we just have this register method to focus on. We're importing schema from Adonis Core Validator and then we're using this to create a new schema with it. We have on our schema that we need a username, an email, and a password. We're defining that our username must be of type string and it's required. We're defining that our email must be of type string and it too is required. And then lastly, we're doing the exact same thing for our password here must be a type string and it's required as well. So all three of these types are automatically required because we're leaving off this optional chain. If we need any of these to be optional, all that we need to do is add this optional chain to this schema string call. And then if we needed any additional data, we just add this to the schema as well, define it a type. And you'll see here within this autocomplete, we have a number of different types that we can use to define what this additional data should be. So it can either be an array, a Boolean, a date, an enum, an enum set, a file, number, object, or a string. Each of these different types are going to have different argument sets. A couple of different options here that we could provide, so either trim or escape. And then the second argument here is the rules. If we hop back over to the Adonis validation and take a look at the types, we can see exactly what each of these different types expects. So you can see exactly what I described here for the string. It accepts an escape and trim option as the first argument, or you can write an empty object and then go directly into your rules thereafter. The number, however, just goes straight into the rules as the first argument. Boolean accepts no arguments. Date can accept a format and then rules thereafter the format. Enum just accepts the enum values to validate against. Enum set accepts pretty much the same thing. The only difference here is how it's validating the data against. So it would accept an array of values instead of a single value. File will take in options for the particular file. The schema type array will accept an array of rules. And then we can chain off of it members to define how each member should be. So we can define a type for each of the array members. So in this case, it needs to be an array of files. If we need it to be an array of strings, we would do schema.string here. And then we can define rules for those too. Object here is pretty similar to an array, except instead of providing just the type for the array members, we define a subset of a schema here for the object definition. And then if you need to just accept whatever type of object, then you could call any members. So those are the different argument types for the different schema types that we have available to us. Now, thereafter, whenever we're describing the rules, we have available to us all of these different rules. And then as mentioned earlier, we can also define our own custom rules. So if we head back into our project here, we have our username with a list of rules right here. So we're defining here that our username must have a maximum length of 50 characters, a minimum length of three characters. It must be unique in our database for the table users under the column username, and then it must match this regex sequence, stating that it must be an alphanumeric string accepting 
hyphens, and underscores in addition to the alphanumeric. And then for our email, we're only doing a small subset of that. So we're requiring our email to be unique in our users table under the column email. For our password, it must have a minimum length of eight characters. Another example here, if we take a look at our task controller here, I put in a validation schema for our task here. So our task here must have a name and it must be of type string. And then we're going to trim that string. So the white space from the beginning and end of that string will be trimmed off of our returned data. And then this name must have a minimum length of three characters and a maximum length of 50 characters. And then next up here, we have our description, which is optional. If it's provided, it must be of type string. Uh, so this value here can either be string or undefined or description can be left off of our data altogether. Same kind of thing going on here for our status ID. It is optional. It must be an enum if it's provided. And the enum value must be one of the members within our status enum. For our assignee ID, it must be of type number if it's provided. Again, this is optional. And then if it's provided, we're going to validate that it exists within our users table under the column ID. And then lastly here, we just have an optional date for our due app. As I mentioned earlier, we can also provide custom validation errors. So by default, if we did not define any messages, Adonis would still provide an error message to us. It just wouldn't match exactly as you might expect. So in this case, we define these errors as we expect them to be. There's a couple of different ways that we can find them. So here in our first commented out example here, we have name dot min length. So here we're saying that if our name fails and it fails on the min length rule, then we want to provide this particular error message. And then the same thing going on for max length. So if min length passes, but max length fails on our name, then we want to provide this error message. Then we can go on and on as far as we need to being as specific as we need to with this name rule kind of syntax. Conversely, we can also leave off the particular key value and just define messages for each particular rule. So if min length fails on any of these, then we want to provide this particular error. And then the same kind of thing for max length. If max length fails on any of these, then we provide this error. And then you'll see here that there's also some template options here. So in this case, we have these two curly braces with field. So what Adonis will do is if this error message is used, it will take the field that it failed on. So in this case, if this failed for name, this template usage right here for field would be replaced with the errored out key name. So in this case, name. So it would read name must be at least. And then here we have another one for our options. And then this is going to change based off of the rule that you're doing. Um, you can check out the documentation per rule to see exactly how you would define it. Uh, but in this case for min length here, we do options min length. And what this would be injected with is the argument that we provide to min length. So three. So this full string here, if it failed out for our min length on our name would be name must be at least three characters long. And then the third method that we could do here is to provide just an wildcard error and then provide it a function here, which gets a field rule, array expression pointer, and the options. So then we can use these function arguments to define whatever type of error message we need to. So in this case, field failed rule validation. So if our, again, name failed on the min length, this would read out name failed min length validation. And then lastly, to apply these to our validation, all that we need to do is take the object here and provide it in as the message key to our validate call. Now, if our validation fails, it will use these defined error messages whenever it returns our error back to us instead of the default error message that Adonis has. And then again, if our validation succeeds, we're going to get back just the valid data within our valid data return value here. So it would contain name, description, status ID, assignee ID, and duet. Okay, so now that we've covered kind of the basics of validation, let's go ahead and create a custom rule. So let's go ahead and head into our terminal here and let's create a preload file so that we can actually define a custom validation. So let's do node ace make PRLD file validation rules. So now if you wanted to, what this PRLD file is short for is preload file. Uh, what you could do is create a new preload file for each of the custom rules that you need to provide if you need to provide a lot of custom rules. In our case, we just have this one that we're going to do. So we're just going to plop it in this single file here, validation rules. And then if we were to add any later on, we could tag them in this file here as well. So let's go ahead and hit enter to create that. It's going to ask us whether or not we want this for an ACE command or an HTTP server. Select HTTP server, and then it's going to create it within our start directory. So let's go ahead and head into that. So we get a nice comment block here to say that it is a preload file. So first and foremost, we're going to want to import our validator. So let's import validator from at IOC Adonis core validator. And then next, we're going to want to define our custom role. So let's say that if we take a look back here at our user validation here, we want to tack on an additional rule here to ensure that our username is not a particular value. 
So let's say that we want to blacklist particular usernames like admin and moderator from being available to users to register with. So we could define that rule here within our validation rules. So let's do validator.rule. We can make this a little bit vague so that we can have multiple usages for it outside of our just our user's username here. So we do not in. So we're gonna accept for this rule an array of values that we want our value in particular to not meet a member of. So what we want is whenever we call this rule, we want to do rule dot not in and then provide an array of rules that we want to make sure our user cannot use as a username. So maybe like admin and moderator. So the second argument here to this validator rule is going to be the value in itself that the user is trying to register. So this will be of type string since it's going to be the username that they're trying to register with. The second is going to be an array. And then inside of this array is going to be our arguments. So since we want the first one, we can go ahead and kind of extract this out and give the first argument here the particular name that we want it to have. So let's call this our not in array. So this is the array of values that we want to make sure that the value is not a member of. So in this case, this would be this right here. And then lastly here, we're going to get an object with some error reporting properties on it. So it'd be pointer, array expression pointer, and error, whoops, reporter. Okay, and then let's just do our function. And then inside of this function, we're going to want to actually validate using the data within this callback. So we're going to want to validate that our value is not within this not in array. Before we do that, though, we can do some type checking here. So if type of value, which would be what the user is trying to use as their username, is not a string, then let's just go ahead and return. Because we're going to have our particular type on our validation here saying that the username must be a string. So we don't need to double check that within this particular rule. We, we can let our type handle that error. And then optionally here, we can also do whether or not we provided a not in array. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that if we're not provided a not in array, or if our not in array is not an array, then let's just assume that the username is A-OK -okay to use. So or not array is array or not in array. Okay, so now next what we can do is check for any matches with our value and not in array values. So const, matches equals not in array and let's just filter through this so each item within our not in array okay and then quite simply here we can just return whether item is equal to our value and then if you wanted to here you could lowercase these or capitalize them to make them a little bit more vague uh, but we're just going to leave this nice and simple for right now so if we find any matches here so if our value is found within this not in array so if matches dot length then we want to report that we found an error. So let's use the error reporter here and report that we found an error, pass it in the pointer, pass it in the rule that failed, which would be our not in rule, give it an error message. So we can do this value is restricted. And then we want to provide it the array expression pointer. Okay, so now we have our not in rule nice and defined here. Next up, what we need to do is define it as a member on the rules interface. And the way that we can do that is within our contracts here. Let's go ahead and create a new file. Let's call this validator.ts. Okay, let's declare the module IOC Adonis core validator because we want to extend it. Within here, let's import the type rule from at IOC Adonis core validator. And then let's export the interface rules and let's define our not in rule on these rules. So not in, and then within here, we wanna define that we wanna accept options. And these options should be an array of type string. And then our not in method here is of type rule. So there we go, let's give that a save. And then let's jump back into our users controller and let's add this in as a rule. So rules dot not in. And then we can provide it an array of the values that we want to make sure our user cannot register as a username. So admin and moderator. And now we're good to go. Okay, so next up here, if you have a rather large schema here that you need to create, or if you need to use this schema in multiple places, Adonis allows us to create validators that we can define outside of our controller here, and then we can use it in any place that we need. So let's jump back into our terminal here and let's run node ace make 
validator and let's do this for our register validator. So register validator, go ahead and hit enter and it will create this validator file for us within our app validators directory. So let's jump into that. And you'll see it gives us a default exported class of our register validator. It's going to call constructor. And then within this constructor, we actually have access to our HTTP context contract values. And then it also has a public schema member, which creates our new schema for us. And then a public messages object. So in order to move our users schema here off our users controller and into our register validator, all that we need to do is take our schema create definition here for our username, email, and password cut this out and paste it over into our validator schema. In addition to just importing schema, we need to also import rules so that we have those available to us. Okay, and then we don't have any messages to port over, but uh, we can go ahead and jump back into our user's control and get rid of this schema altogether. Okay, and then since our register validator contains both our messages, which in this case we don't have any, and our schema, all that we need to do is provide our request validate call here, our validator. So we can do register, validator and now we're good to go all that we need to do is provide it that class and it will take care of the rest so let's actually pluck a couple of uh, these error messages off of our task controller example here and plop them into our register validator and there we go so now we have a couple of error messages defined here as well okay and then lastly here i just want to quickly cover something that i like to do uh, within my personal projects i like to create a base validator and then within here, I like to define some vague error messages that will apply throughout my entire application for particular rules. So export default class base validator, and this is completely optional. And what I'm gonna do is just pluck the messages out of my register validator and into my base validator. Give that a save, jump back into my register validator here, and I'm going to extend my base validator. And then of course, since I'm extending, I need to call super within the constructor. And so now what I did is essentially I moved my vague messages here from my min length and my max length off into my base validator and then automatically applying it via extending my base validator to my register validator. So now those same messages are defined here on my register validator via extension. So now if I had other validations as well, I could do the same thing and just use these vague messages here to define all of those error messages for each individual validator. Okay, so that should do it for validation. We should be able to fully validate our requests, get back the validated data from those validations and be all set to go to save our data and send back our responses. So in the next lesson, what we're gonna do is move from our app directory down into our resources directory and start covering some templating using Edge.